we have reached example 10 of this chapter. In this example, we are going to solve a cubic equation like this. Okay. Before we even go into solving of this equation, I want to highlight to you okay, a very small and yet very important difference between solving an equation and factorizing an expression. For example, if you are asked to factorize a cubic equation, I'm sorry, a cubic expression completely, all right, what you have to do as a final answer, okay, you just list out a list of um, all the factors, okay, this is called factorize, all right, so list out all the factors and you have completely factorized. Now, what is the difference between solving and factorizing? First of all, to solve an equation, it has to be an equation at the first place. It has to have an equal sign. Okay? And without the equal sign, you can't solve. Okay? It is not an equation. You can't solve. You can only solve equations. So, to solve an equation like this, a cubic equation, you have to factorize first. Okay? And then equate to zero. And then you have to tell them, okay, write down the values of x. Okay, so in this case, after you fully completely uh, factorize, all right, you have to list out the values of x. So x is equal to two third, x is equal to three, x is equal to negative one. Then you are saying that well, you have solved the equation. Okay, so um, this is very important. When the question asks you to factorize, you stop here. Okay, you don't have to proceed any further, even if it is an equation you stop here, factorize completely, you just list out all the factors. If the question asks you to solve, okay, you have to give them the x value. Alright, so with that said and done, now that you have a clearer understanding of the difference between factorizing and solving, let us proceed on to, do, um, to go through okay, this example 10. Okay, so example 10 is a qubit equation, and you're supposed to solve it. So the first step of course, like we always do, we let fx equals to x cubed plus 3x squared plus 3x plus 2 equals to 0. Right? So before we can solve the equation, we have to factorize the equation. Okay? How do we factorize this equation? As we learned earlier in the earlier examples, okay, the first step is to trial and error. Okay, we'll guess guess a factor first. Okay, so since this is the constant term is a 2, well, we know that we can try, you know, perhaps f1. Okay, but the f1 is obvious to spot. Okay, because you can see that this is 1, this is 3, this is 3, and this is 2. So obviously you won't get 0 from here. Okay, so 1 is obviously not a factor. So it seems like every any po positive values that you substitute in will not give you any zero. So let us try perhaps um, negative 2, shall we? So we shall try negative 2, and this will give us a negative 8, okay, because negative 2 cubed, okay, plus, all right, uh, negative 2 square will give us a 4, positive 4, 4 multiplied by 3, that will give us a 12, okay, and this will give me a negative 6 plus 2, okay? Now when we add this up, Yes, we get a zero. All right. So when we do get a zero, we know that, hey, you know, x plus two is a factor. All right. So now that we know one of the factors, okay, in this equation, um, that you shouldn't have any problem finding the rest of the factors, isn't it? Okay, um, as we have done early in those earlier examples. Okay, so what do we do? Well, of course, we will try to do the synthetic division. Okay, so the synthetic division, one more time. Okay, the coefficient of x cubed is 1, coefficient of x squared is 3, coefficient of x is 3, the constant term is 2. So this will be a plus here, and this little corner here will put in our x value. So if x plus 2 is a factor, x equals to negative 2. Okay, so how are we going to do the synthetic division? For those of you who are still not quite familiar with the synthetic division, please refer to the previous examples. Okay, so uh, first step, bring down 
um, 1 and we have 1 multiplied by negative 2 that will give us negative 2 add this up you get 1 again so multiply by negative 2 this will give me another negative 2 so add this up again you get another 1 1 mul multiply by negative 2 this will give you a 0 okay so we have um, basically completed our synthetic division here okay and uh, please do remember that the synthetic division is only a short cut of our long division so of course if you are you know one of those who likes to do um, long division rather than synthetic division by all means go ahead okay uh, there's nothing wrong all right it's just that uh, you know you may end up uh, spending more time for your division okay whereas if you do synthetic division as you can see um, it is actually a lot faster okay so what have we got here after the synthetic division the other factor isn't it so we realize that the other factor is 1x squared plus 1x plus 1 so this is the other factors okay so it's equal to 0 don't forget okay because um, it, this is an equation okay this equation was equal to 0 right in the first place so we're supposed to solve for this alright now of course you take a look at this this is hey you know another um, quadratic equation okay so you will try to factorize this further okay uh, of course the best scenario is you know perhaps you can uh, factorize into three linear factors as uh, what I show you earlier on okay so however if you take a look at this x squared plus x plus 1 you start to realize hey you know there's just no way you can factorize this okay I suppose most of you learn it this way um, you know in school okay um how to cross factorize your 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 quadratic equation like this so you realize that, you know you can't you can't fit in the plus or minus here you know all right so for those of you who have learned quadratic equation um well okay um quadratic equation which is another topic uh in the amf syllabus so um you will start to realize that the discriminant okay your b square minus 4ac Alright, in this case, it will be 1 square minus 4 multiplied by 1, multiplied by 1, which will give us a negative 3. So, those of you who have learned your quadratic equation chapter, you realize that whenever your discriminant, which is b square minus 4ac, whenever it is negative, there is no real roots. What does it mean to be no real roots? That means to say there is no solution. Okay, you can simply use a general solution to work this out and you won't get a solution because you cannot square root a negative number. So what this leaves us now is that this function here, when equate to zero, this is not valid. This is not, you know, not applicable. Okay, you can't equate this to zero because it is impossible to become zero. Okay, you can't solve this expression. You can't solve this quadratic equation here. So, ultimately, there's only one answer for our x, and that x will be equal to negative 2. Because when x is equal to negative 2, you substitute in, you will get a 0 for your fx. Okay? So this is one of the type of questions that you have to pay attention to. Alright? So, understanding your quadratic e equation is very, very important. Okay? So, for those of you who are unfamiliar, Okay, you may want to take a look at the quadratic equations and functions um, uh, chapter. Alright?